inside sales and it failed. We all know that scripts don't really work and scripts typically don't work because they're linear. And sales is like poker that's non-linear. We have to teach patterns and processes in order to have the best chance of the outcome that you want. That's huge. I'm so happy to see you guys. Wait, wait. That was terrible. That was terrible. Hold on a second. You guys all have a personal videographer that you carry around with you too, right? Gianni, Gianni, why don't you come up here? Let's hype these people up. This is Gianni, everybody. His hair is almost as good as mine, but not quite. He does what he can. So on three, I want you to cheer. One, two, three. Now, when we edit that, that's what's going to happen when I walk on stage. Isn't that amazing? Thanks, man. Awesome. All right, so... I can't see anybody out there, but what I do know is that a whole bunch of our clients, hey, Renee, I can see you down there. It's hard to see, but a lot of our clients are here. You guys have stopped by the booth and uh, you know told us how much it means to you, all the training that we do inside Follow Up Boss, which is awesome, that's why we do it. I know I can't see you, but you know the Kamar group is here, the Chabra group is here. We've got um, Chabra group you know, selling all the real estate in Canada, which is fantastic. Uh, Front Gate Real Estate, you guys are amazing. Platinum, Idaho. Yeah. There we go. Excellent. So uh, what I'm talking about today is I got a little bit ambitious, right? So I wanted to try and teach you guys the five key scripts that you're going to need to convert more leads in 2023. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is I really wanted to try to get some of the key uh, objections that your agents are running into so that they can stay in the conversation have a better shot at actually getting things converted, getting that appointment, getting that face-to-face. -face. And then I found out that I only had 30 minutes, that little clock right down there. So for anybody who knows me and has done training with us, we do highly interactive training where we're role-playing, we're practicing, we're correcting, we're actually uh, doing call review, right? So that we can actually get in the trenches with these salespeople and give them the hard sales skills that they need to actually make sales. Because I don't know about you, I'm a simple guy. I'm not super great at technology. I'm just really good at selling stuff. And I'm good at having conversations with people. So for me, that's what we do at my company. How do I go to the next slide? I didn't ask anybody that. Oh, I need a clicker. There we go. I brought a camera guy and no clicker. So there we go. For the three of you in here who don't know who we are, we're Smart Coaching and Training. I'm the founder of it. I sold real estate. I was one of the top FISBO and expired prospectors in my market. I then teamed up with another guy in my office. Uh, we went on to scale that team to 30 agents and 650 transactions. And a big part of that was by building and optimizing a, a, an inside sales department. So in order to do that, who in here has tried to do inside sales and it failed? Let's hear you. Who's done it? Let's hear it. Wow, a lot of people, right? It's really hard to do. I thought it was simple like the rest of you. And I said, hey, partner, let's do inside sales. Let's get together. He said, that's fantastic. And then we proceeded to waste a bunch of money, waste a bunch of time until I went and learned how to do it from somebody else. So that's where Smart Inside Sales started when I first started doing our coaching and training company. And since then, what I realized is that agents need a lot of those skills and those uh, abilities also, and there wasn't a lot of training for it. So then we created Conversion University to give that to everybody. Um, so what we do is we specialize in scripting and dialogue training for agents and ISAs, as well as sales management, optimization, and team building consulting. So really what that means is all this amazing talk that you hear up here about converting leads, all the amazing technology, go home and kick your agents in the ass, all that other stuff. Well, you can't just go kick them in the ass. You gotta teach them what to do and you have to make them do it over and over again and practice it. That's what we do, we help you do that. So for the follow-up boss, oh, let me figure out which one. There we go, it's the forward arrow. There we go. For all of you follow-up boss users, as uh, Ricardo said, we have training available too. So Conversion University, is a nine, nine module video training course that comes along with live interactive training with a coach normally. But for follow-up boss users, you guys get the nine module video training course right inside your follow-up boss. Super simple, you go to the top right corner, click the question mark. In follow-up boss academy, you'll see a right at the top is Conversion U. 
So you should all be using that for onboarding your agents, onboarding your ISAs. It's all free. doesn't cost anything else. It's a benefit to you guys. Thank you. Uh, so you're going to want to do that, implement that. And, uh, you know, you can come by, check us out in the booth if you have any questions about how to get connected to that. So in getting prepared to talk about these scripts with you guys, I actually just recently read this cool book. Has anybody read this book, Thinking in Bets? Or listen to it? Because I listen to stuff I don't have time to read. Who has time to read? So this is a really cool book by Annie Duke. And she is a whip-smart scientist, right? Multi-degreed scientist, very intelligent. And like most really intelligent scientists, she made her fortune by being a professional poker player. Crazy, right? So in this book, which is really awesome, and I think her brother is also a professional poker player, what she talks about is the difference between poker and, say, chess, right? Where poker is a nonlinear game, chess is a very linear game chess there's a certain sequence of moves you can pretty much anticipate if someone does this i should do this very straightforward but poker is unlike that there's a lot of variables that you can't control right there is how the cards are going to lay what the experience of the other player is what your mood is how you're feeling at the time and when i was listening to this i was like wow that sounds a lot like sales that's crazy and i think you know the correlation for me was wow you know it's scripts don't really work we all know that scripts don't really work, and scripts typically don't work because they're linear. It's hard to teach somebody how to sell from scripts because they're linear, and sales is like poker that's non-linear. So who in here listening to me right now is like, wait a minute, Dale, you started by saying you're gonna teach me five scripts, right? Now you're saying scripts don't work. I said scripts because that's what you wanna hear. Really what I'm gonna be doing is teaching you patterns because in poker, patterns and processes are what you use according to this book i'm no professional poker player but according to annie duke you have certain patterns and processes that you follow in poker in order to have the best chance of the outcome that you want right that's just like sales so when we're teaching scripting and dialogue to our agents to our isas when we want them to go out and have conversations with people where they can potentially lose large sums of money and feel bad about themselves like losing at poker we have to teach them the patterns and processes and then reinforce them so that they can draw on their training and not change what they're doing in the moment that's huge another really cool thing from this book when we're talking about changing your process midstream is that she introduced this concept of resulting and i had never heard of this before so um she's talking about being mentored you know, learning how to play poker, learning how to become a professional at it and hopefully make money and, you know, not go broke. And one of the major factors that they taught her, one of the key concepts is to avoid resulting, right? And resulting is changing your strategy based on individual results. So, you know, when you're in the heat of the moment, you've made a certain play, it didn't go the way you wanted to, even though you followed everything you're supposed to do, even though you did what you were taught, you followed the pattern, Resulting is saying, oh man, I don't want to lose again. I'm going to change the way I do this. I think I'm just going to do it differently this time. I'm going to see what works. So how many of you in trying to train salespeople have run into, I'm going to see what works, right? They do it a lot, that's resulting. So what we do in my company is we teach the best practices, the best patterns, the best strategies that are going to help them win most of the time. That's key. So when you go back and talk to them, you say, listen, I got Dale's slides, and we're, I'm gonna give you the QR code at the end, okay? You don't have to come talk to me in my booth. I'll give it to you. You can have them. When you take those slides, you're gonna go, and you're gonna give it to these agents. You're gonna teach them. You're gonna show them this video. And unfortunately, I have five here. I'm not gonna be able to get through all five. I think I can get through two, hopefully. But you'll have all the slides, and you can come talk to us. And a lot of these that I'm gonna be doing, we also do teach live twice week, uh, monthly inside the Follow Boss Facebook group that you guys can all attend. Come enjoy, come join us, come role play, and uh, put your agents on there. I'll kick them in the ass a little bit for you. But the point is, you're gonna teach it to them. You're gonna say, hey, these are the best practices. You wanna follow these practices, implement them. And Dale said, don't think about it, just do it. Don't try to change it based on your individual results. Just do these, do it over and over again and you'll probably win most of the time. So I want you to reprogram them.
you're never going to win all the time. There is no magical script. There is no magical how am I going to get somebody over the market crash, waiting till spring, right? Talk to my spouse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I can give you patterns on how to deal with these things. So, I'm going to have to go quick, right? I'm not going to be able to get through all five of these. And what's crazy is everybody who's trained with me before knows that we're highly interactive. So trying to teach this stuff to you, where I'm standing up here talking is a little bit awkward. So I'm going to try to do that. It would be, I wanted to do role play. And Ricardo was like, no, man, I can't run. Can't run mics around the room, man. You're just going to have to do it. Okay, fine. Next time we're doing live role play. Sound good? Yes. All right, let's get into these. So I'm going to start with going to wait for the market to crash. And I want to teach you guys these patterns. You can go back, give them to your agents. Um, and this is a big one. And waiting for the market to crash, it's not just waiting for the market to crash. This could be, I'm waiting for interest rates to come back down. I'm waiting for Bernie Sanders to get into office. Whatever it is, right? Whatever comes out of these people's mouths. It's whatever they're waiting on uh, in this kind of context where it's out of everybody's hands and there's really no basis for reality. Or sometimes there is because of the things they're seeing. Um, here's what I see. This is one of the biggest, uh, or the four biggest errors that we hear when we're either role playing with agents and ISAs or we're listening to their calls because we do a ton of call review. I listen to a thousand calls. I have a podcast called Cash Call where all we do is play actual recordings and then coach to them live. So the biggest ones that I hear are agents and I salespeople. I'm just going to use salespeople to cover it. Salespeople disagree with somebody, right? Oh, no, it's not going to crash. Okay, thank you. They weren't ready for that. Or they make them wrong. Or they educate them. This is the worst. If you could just help your people not do this, somebody objects to them. Hey, you know what? Thanks for your call. I'm just going to wait for the market to crash and then scoop up all the half price properties. Fantastic. Don't educate them before understanding them. Okay? So you're not just going to say, oh, hey, that's never going to happen and all the data why that's not going to happen right now. Don't do that. And don't close them immediately. This is the worst. You guys ever heard this? Right? Oh, I'm going to objection. Oh, okay, well, sir, but uh, if the perfect home came up, would you be ready to write an offer on it? No, you idiot. I just said I'm not doing that. Did you hear me? It happens a lot. It happens a lot. And, you know, we're here doing the training every day. We see it all the time. So those are the four key things not to do. So, Dale, what's the pattern they should follow? And this really permeates through most of our training. You're going to understand them first. People don't say stupid shit because they want to say stupid shit. They say stupid shit because they think it's right. Right? And if they say stupid things because they think they're right, you better understand how they think it's right, why they think it's right, what it's going to do for them. Right? Before you try to do anything else, understand that. So you're going to get their perspective, experience, or benefit to them. Then you're going to educate them. Now you have permission to educate them. Now you can be that smart little salesperson who knows everything about your market, which you absolutely should. Like Tom Ferry said, right? You need to know your market. Your agents need to know your market. Your agents just need to know enough about the market to be dangerous. That's all they need. So then you can educate them and then you're going to soft close them. Here's how the pattern goes. Let me understand you. Let me get inside your head. Let me get on the same side of the table as you. Accept it. Don't argue with you. Don't make you wrong. Now I'm going to offer you information that is accurate, that's going to help you make a better decision. And then I'm going to ask you, if the circumstances were right, would you make a different decision? And I'll show you guys how that works. Now, are your agents going to be able to take this, go out there, talk to anybody who wants to wait and convert them immediately? get them to see the light, get them to see, yes, thank you so much. I want to buy or sell now. No, that's not going to happen. And when that doesn't happen, I don't want to hear them say, great, I'll keep sending you properties and give you a call in a couple of months. That's not a logical next step. That's not a good follow-up. So if it doesn't work, they're going to go to a logical next step and we're going to talk about what that pattern looks like and how to do it. And once they have it, once they understand it, as long as they get the three pieces, they can always do it. All right, so let's go through the questions, then we'll go through the educate, the soft close, and then we'll move on to the logical close or the logical next step just to demonstrate it for you guys. 
So somebody says, hey, Dale, you, that's great. Thanks for calling, man. I'm going to wait for the market to crash. Oh, when you say market crash, what do you mean? What do they don't know? Half the time they don't know. Sometimes they do know. They know they're going to think they're going to wait to pay half price for a house or they're just going to scoop up a whole block. I don't know, whatever it is. But the thing is, me as a salesperson, if I want to understand you, I'm not going to put in there what I think. I'm not going to assume, stop assuming. I'm going to ask you. And that's the simplest question. When you say market crash, what do you mean? When do you think that will happen? They have no idea when that's going to happen. Or they have some perceived idea or imaginary idea of when that's going to happen. Just find out from them. What will that do for you? Dad, Dale, I'm going to wait for the market to crash. Prices are going to come down. It's going to be amazing. Great. What's that going to do for you when the market crashes? Notice I didn't say if. I said when. I'm just going to agree with your nonsense until it's time to not agree with your nonsense. And then this is the kicker. This is where you start to make the transition with them. Remember, I said people don't say stupid shit because they want to say stupid shit. If they believe that this is going to happen and they believe they're going to benefit from it and they believe that it's going to happen at some point in the near future, I have to slowly turn the battleship. I can't make a hard left. Can't make a hard left in a battleship. But this transition question is a really good one. What if that doesn't happen? And I wouldn't deliver it that way. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Listen, man, I, I want to buy half price properties, too. I'm so excited in case that does. But what if it doesn't happen? I guarantee you they'll be like, uh, they'll have to think about it. They'll have to shift their perspective into, I didn't think about that. What would I do? This is a good pivotal moment here to figure out if they actually had the motivation to buy or sell anything in the first place or even the ability to do it. Because a lot of times people are just objecting based on fear or they just want to argue and it's really covering up some other issue that they have going on. So your salespeople have to be, when they can be taught this series of questions that they can do, they can uncover that stuff and they can stay in the conversation and have no emotion tied to it. And if they have no emotion tied to it, they don't need to be resulting. They don't need to change their strategy. They can just execute the process like all these great automations that we want to put in. All right, so we asked these questions, and now what we're going to do is now we're going to educate. Oh, got it. You want to buy half price properties. That's fantastic. You think it's going to happen sometime in the spring? Awesome. And if that doesn't happen, you said that you don't know what you're going to do. Okay, got it. Well, now I'm going to roll right into education. I'm not going to ask permission. I'm just going to do it. Well, you know, I mean, there's only been 11 recessions in the past 100 years, and over those 100 years and 11 recessions, Prices really only came down any kind of substantial amount twice, right? Once in 1980 and once in 2008. 2008 is probably the one you're most familiar with. But the economists that I follow really point to five main reasons that the market won't crash anytime soon. And that's low inventory, lack of new construction housing, a huge amount of new buyers still, um, strict lending standards, and really no foreclosures to talk about now. I'm not going to invite your opinion. I'm not going to invite an argument. I'm not going to invite your yeah buts that you want to insert. I'm just going to roll right into a soft close with you. So if the perfect home came up and it checked most of the boxes for you, would you at least want to go see it for a buyer if you're a seller? So if we were able to get you a great offer that made a lot of sense and it looked like a great deal for you, would you at least want to see it? soft close right not hey if i found you the right home are you ready to write an offer that's not going to work in that situation and that's probably what half of your agents would probably do at best that's not what we're going to do this kind of process are the things that help salespeople stay in conversations and get more wins get more hits and unfortunately the phillies didn't make it happen but get more on base hits, right? Astros. Astros, you guys Astro fan? Yes. Go Astros. Good for them. They were a great team. Now, oh, that's amazing, Dale. That's awesome. I'm going to take it back and we're going to set all the appointments in that CRM. No, you're not. It's not going to happen. They will set more. But what happens if they don't? What happens if the person says, nope, Dale, I love your pretty words and your pretty hair, 
but I'm just going to sit here in my hobbit hole. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to hide out until the storm passes, and I'm going to see what happens then. I'm not going to do anything. Got it. Hey, we're going to move on to a logical next step. I'm not just going to email you and randomly call you. I'm going to set with you when we're going to talk next, why we're going to talk next, and what you're going to get out of it. This is a huge technique that you can teach your salespeople. If they ended every conversation with a lead or potential lead or anybody with a logical next step like this, when we're going to talk, why we're going to talk, what you're going to get out of it, that's hugely powerful. That's the what's next, okay? So, you know, Mr. Buyer, you want to wait for the market to crash? Wait and see half price houses? Fantastic. Got it. Nothing I said is going to shake you. Okay, I totally understand. Well, you know, I mean, my job as a sales professional is to make sure that you Boom make the best users, decision possible that was for yourself, recently. and I really want you to do that. So I'm constantly watching the market, home prices, and what interest rates are doing. So what I'll do is, today's Wednesday, I'll reach out to you in two weeks, which is really kind of how the interval works for financial info. I'll reach out to you Wednesday around the same time, just to give you an update on where things are at so you can keep making fantastic decisions. So all of that includes when we're going to talk, why we're going to talk, what you're going to get out of it. Good? All right. Let's move on to the next one. I've got eight minutes. I'm going to try to get through a couple of these. I can get at least one more. We're going to skip over wait till spring. Again, you guys are going to get all the slides. Need to talk to my spouse. That one, I love that one, but it's going to take a little while. So I'm going to move on to I'm not ready to list my home or look at homes. This is another huge one that we have to deal with a lot of times. And, you know, rightfully so. People aren't always ready to list their house or go look at houses. So what do you do? Most agents that haven't had a whole amount of good amount of training are either going to argue or they're going to try to close them immediately or they're just going to give up and email them, right? Let me know. Let me know if you see something. I'll give you a call in a couple months. Give me a call in a couple months. Nope. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to determine what their process is. We're going to change what we represent. Okay? And then we're going to close for that new idea. And if you can't get it still, then we're going to go to the logical next step. You guys remember what logical next step is? Got to remember it. Uh, so determining their process. What do I mean by that? What I mean is how, they have some kind of process they're going to go through or they don't, right, before they'll go see houses or before they'll list something. So I'm going to try to figure out what that is as best I can. And then I need to change what I represent. What do I mean by that? When they're saying no, they're saying no to go look at houses. They're saying when, when I say, hey, can we go take a look at some houses, get out, do whatever? They're saying no because going to look at houses represents buying a house and being ready to buy a house. Having you come over to their house and sit on their couch or look at their house represents them being ready to sell their house and have people walk through their house. So we have to change what that represents in order to be able to get a yes or even a maybe. So if I'm talking to a buyer, for instance, hey, you know what, uh, wonderful, thanks for telling me all that. I'd really love to help you and your family get into your next home. Can we go out and take a look at some this week? No, nope, no, nope, not ready to buy yet. Not ready to look at homes got it okay I'm this question here I'm going to name the thing they don't want this is important when will you be ready to seriously shop there's a reason I'm saying seriously shop I want to name the thing you don't want because then I'm gonna offer you something that you didn't say no to I'm gonna change what I represent somebody says no nope, not ready to sell my house man it's gonna be a few months you know a while from now hey no problem when will you be ready to meet with a listing agent or meet with an agent about listing your home. I want to be really specific about what that means because I'm going to call it out. And then in the next step, once we've had that conversation, if they'll give me some of their process, fantastic. If they won't give me some of their process, then we move on and we stay in the conversation. Because, for instance, with a buyer, I'm going to change what this means. I'm going to change what I'm asking them for. No, nope, Dale, not ready to go look at homes. Hey, got it. When do you think you will be ready to seriously shop? I don't know, probably closer to April of next year. Hey, that makes sense. That's excellent. Uh, well, you know, a lot of buyers that I work with in the past have found it helpful just to take a test tour of a few homes in the neighborhood and price range that they think they might be interested in. Nothing serious. 
just get out and actually walk through the spaces and get a feeling for the finishes and different layouts before they seriously shop and so they know what they're looking at online while they're on their couch, right? I want you to see all the language in here. Test tour is what I'm changing it to. Think they might be interested. That's very soft language. Nothing serious. I'm taking the sale away. Before they seriously shop, remember we named it seriously shopping? No, no, no. We don't want serious shopping. Serious shopping's not gonna happen later, until later. That's not what we're doing here. We're not seriously shopping. Buyer, or sellers. Yeah, Dale, not ready to list, man. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll let you know when we're ready to actually meet with an agent. Hey, when are you, well, when will you be ready to meet with an agent to list your home? Oh, man, it won't be for like six months or so. Okay, great. Glad that we have a plan. You know, usually sellers who want to make sure they net the most when they are ready to sell, really, they just have me come by ahead of time, take a look at their home, and suggest easy, low-cost ways to maximize their sales price and lower their time on market you know, usually a few weeks or months before they're actually ready to list their home for sale. Again, softening language. It's not going to happen now. That's not what we're doing. You're not meeting with an agent to list your house. One of the things that I don't like about doing presentations like this is that I have to write these things in concrete language and put them onto a screen for you. Here's what I can tell you. This stuff sounds awesome, if only to me. But when we go through these patterns, this kind of stuff, if I was interacting with you people live, if we were doing this in a real life scenario, the nuances of language that would come out of your mouth, the different ways that you would say things would all influence the way that this piece would go. You can't script that. I could barely script this. And I had to commit to this one channel, to this one set of flavors, of this one set of persuasion. You can't script persuasion. That's the issue, right? So although this works, what I want to tell you is that the patterns are what you need to teach these people. Do not put these slides in front of them. You put the pattern in front of them, and then you make them demonstrate for you the ability to get to this kind of thing, right? If I say, if I'm doing training, if you're doing training with your agent, let's practice buyers. Hey, I'm gonna be a buyer who doesn't wanna go look yet. Great, we get through the discovery. Now it's time to try and close me for an appointment. Nope, not gonna go look at homes. Agent, what are you gonna do? And they're gonna fumble around and they're either gonna say, great, let me call you later. I'm gonna send you some properties or they're just gonna shoot forward and say, okay, you're not ready to look at homes. Well, can we go look at this one that I like? No. No, that's not what you're going to do. You're going to put in softening language. You're going to stretch it out. Let's practice it again. This is how we do the sales training. This is what we teach our trainers to do with the agents and the ISAs. So what happens when they still say no to this? They still won't do it. They won't get off their couch. They won't let you in their door. We are going to go to when will we talk next? Why will we talk next? And what will we get out of it? to the logical next step. That's where we're going. Okay? Excellent. So, let me move. I'm going to, I'm doing really good. I wanted to do I Have an Agent. We didn't get to I Have an Agent. This one is fantastic. This is awesome. I'll just show it to you real quick. I won't be able to get all the way through it. We aren't going to, I love this part. We aren't going to run away. We're not going to use a lame Hail Mary. Well, you know, we sold the most homes. <laughs> You know, I know you love your aunt, sister's cousin, but we sell a lot of houses. Call me. No. And we're not going to close them immediately into the face of that. When I say I have an agent, I don't mean they're under they're in agreement with somebody. They've been actively working with them, and the agent's doing a great job. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not a, not a killer, in spite of how I look. Um, but what we're going to do is just follow a four-step process, right? Don't pee your pants and run away, just ask some questions. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to investigate their level of commitment, determine what they are buying, because they said they're going to work with somebody else. So what are they buying? What do they think they're getting and why? And then we're going to close for a meeting. This is the process. Who in here has seen this process and actually role played this process? Anybody has done this with me live? One person, maybe. We're going to paraphrase. We're going to ask a simple question committed, signed, benefit, then we're gonna craft a custom close and then we're always gonna to move to that logical next step. 
Here's how it sounds. Renee over here, specialist in, like, she's an expert on agents. Renee says, Dale, I'm going to work with somebody else because they're amazing. Okay, great, Renee. Well, you have somebody you're going to work with, Renee? And she's clever. She doesn't fall for those sales tricks. She's like, uh-huh. Okay. Now I have to have another question. Well, Renee, are you committed to that agent? Now, this is a very important question. And this one gets screwed up in role play a lot. I say, hey, you're going to ask, are you committed to that agent? And invariably, somebody's like, well, how committed to that agent are you? I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. It's are you pregnant or are you not? Not how pregnant are you? Let's do it again. Committed is very, very specific. You know what's crazy? We role play this so many times. And do you know how many people, how many role players, how many professional salespeople, when I ask in a role play, are you committed to that agent? Don't say yes. Why don't they say yes? Why don't they say yes? True, but this is a role play. They can say whatever the hell they want. They can stump the idiot, right? They can be like, yeah, I'm committed. They don't say, yeah, I'm committed because they're afraid of commitment. Ask my wife. That's why I was engaged for three years, right? We're afraid of commitment. Even in a role play, they don't say that. When you ask that question in real life to real people who are afraid of commitment themselves, you usually get a waffle. Uh, well, they're sending me emails. Um, I spoke to them. They let me in their open house. That's usually the kind of stuff you're gonna hear. Occasionally you hear yes. Sometimes you hear no, great. If you hear no, move on. We don't need to do anything else. You've got one, right? So are you committed to working with that agent? Have you signed anything with that agent? And this is the kicker here. This is the difference. This is where you go from being a basic salesperson to being a really badass sniper salesperson. You say, what's the advantage to working with that agent over any other agent in the market? Teach your people that one question, get them to stay in the conversation at least long enough to get to that one. And they'll have a shot in, in hell of actually converting this person to work with them. Because when you can find out what they think they're getting through that other agent, right? Are they protecting a relationship? Are they avoiding a difficult conversation? Are they just procrastinating the decision? Do they think that they're gonna get more money, save more money? Whatever it is, have a guarantee of success. These are all the things that people think they're buying when they choose an agent to work with. So when you can find that out, now I know what I need to sell you, right? Oh. You want experience and you want great communication and you want a great deal. I got you now. Now I understand what you want and now I can pitch you. And then what we do is we teach people, this is like a value statement, close that we teach, which it just follows this pattern. Hey, you know what, that's fantastic. I'm, my team and I, over the last 200 sales we've made this year, really pride ourselves on our overwhelming communication and the fact that our clients always know where they're at in the process and by doing that and communicating with the agents, we generally get X percentage off of whatever average other agents in the market or sell their properties for X percent more. Yeah? Simple, simple process. All right, I'm out of time, everybody. It's been a pleasure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move on quick. Thank you. Please.